What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another video and for today's video. We know Halloween's right around the corner so I wanted to celebrate and we're going to be doing my top 10 favorite horror films of 2022 with a couple honorable mentions as well to celebrate the occasion. And I know I haven't seen, of course, I haven't seen every horror film out there. Some of the big ones, I haven't seen The Watcher, I haven't seen Smile or Terrifier 2 yet. Those are probably like the main biggest ones. And I think one just came out, Pray for the Devil. I, I haven't seen that one yet. So, like I said, I haven't seen every horror film. But in terms of all the films that I have seen this year in horror genre, we're going to talk about my top ten. And like I said, a couple honorable mentions. And this is just my list, of course. My personal opinion. So what that means is I would love to hear from all of you in the comment section. Share your list or some of your favorite horror films that have come out this year because this is a very rich year in horror. I think 2022 was better than last year in my opinion in terms of the overall horror. So let's get down to this video. Roll it. So as I said today, we are talking about the horror films that came out this year. And yes, 2022, I think, is a very rich year in terms of horror films. There's been a very wide range of all kinds of horror films for all kinds of fans. And today we're going to talk about my favorites with a couple honorable mentions. And let's get those ones up right away. And one of them right off the bat is... The Texas Chainsaw Massacre that premiered on Netflix this year. I think that film was actually quite the banger, like for real. Like I know some people talk how bad the characters were written or how the characters were designed and how it was acted. But and I know we had a legacy character that ended up being inserted into this film that felt very reminiscent of Halloween 2018. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre for me, it's just a good popcorn leather face film. Like when I went into it, it gave me everything I wanted. Plus we have a actual massacre in this movie. That bus massacre scene is probably one of the greatest scenes in horror history. Like no joke, the way it's shot, the colorization, the like the sound effects and the sound design and the score that's going on during that scene. And Leatherface just tears that bus apart. Sarah Yarkin, I think, is actually an underrated actress. And she's fabulous in this film. She's in the Happy Death Day to You, or the part, the part two one. And, oh man, she's fabulous in this film as the older sister. And I think the two sisters in this film have a good dynamic. Another honorable mention we're going to talk about right now is VHS 99, which highly surprised me. This is one that I caught on Shudder. This is a found footage film, and if you don't aren't familiar with the VHS series, this is a series of films where they do mini short films inside of a, like a whole film length. So there's usually five to six short stories within the films, and VHS 99 completely surprised me. That 90s nostalgia really hits hard. I love the different skits. Like I pretty much loved all of them, and they lean more into the kind of satirical dark comedy route in this one but man I was laughing my ass off and having such a fun time my favorite skit in this one is probably Ozzy's Dungeon damn the way they took that one and where that one went I couldn't believe it I also like from uh, To Hell and Back that's another great one as well too so those are probably my two favorite skits in the new VHS film so those are my two honorable mentions now let's get down to the main 10. And now coming in at number 10 is one that totally surprised me. And this is one that I just completely had fun with. And it's Orphan First Kill. And man, this film, like when it was announced, I was highly excited for this film because the director was adamant about how we're just going to use practical effects and camera trickery to make her look younger and make her look the like the height from the older actors and stuff like because we have the same actress coming to play Esther in this film and it's you know been quite a while since that first orphan film and man this this movie is one of those films for like about that first 25 to 30 minutes I was a little bit bored I was like ah oh, where are we going with this is we're kind of recycling the same movie. What are we doing? And then when Julia Stiles steps in and that switch is flipped in that middle act when we drop the ball and we figure out like the twist, like, oh, it changed into a different movie for me. And this is one that I can see myself returning to much more often than The First Orphan, which I really do like The First Orphan. 
but this one just the fun dialogue the fun ride and i think the way that like esther's character bounces off of julia styles like the way their characters are like battling each other like man it's just it was awesome to see it kind of reminded me of something like war of the roses you know what i mean like just that nature of a film but it's like bombastic you know horror and it goes all out in that third act and that's what i really appreciated next up coming in at number nine we have you won't be alone and this is following a film that is we follow a character who is a lady kidnapped by a ancient spirit and is turned into a witch and she slowly is able to inhabit different people's bodies throughout the film like shape-shifting and be a man a woman a child and really experience the different aspects of life from all those angles and i really love this film and it takes place i believe it's 19th century macedonia and <clears throat> just the authenticity of this film and it's not like horror horror like gore all kinds but there are some really graphic scenes like i would say like three there's like three really graphic haunting scenes in this film but just for me it's the character like acting in this movie and the authenticity that really drive me to love this film and i must confess right off the bat this is a slow paced film so if you're going to digest this film it's very slow paced like i said it's a much more character study type film but the different actresses that they get to play our character and the man and the child like and how she shapeshifts into different forms and experiences life through all those eyes it really does open one's eyes up to how the world is even though it takes place way back then in like 19th century it still has stuff to say in our time now coming in at number eight we have ty west's Pearl and man, what Ty West has been doing with A24 is just fabulous. He's one of my favorite new horror directors. He's just climbing the the ladder in terms of like talent and horror directors. Pretty soon he's going to be right up there, I think, with some of the best horror directors because Ty West is popping out amazing content and Pearl was no different. It's I mean, it's completely different than the film X, but in terms of what Ty West brought to the screen, I absolutely loved it. Pearl is much more kind of like You Won't Be Alone, a much more character study, but my goth just steals every scene and for reals. Like I would totally, if I was like the Oscar committee, if I was to vote somebody in, I would totally give her a nomination for Best Actress because she deserves it. What she does in this movie is she really gets to show her range and really takes over the screen, like I said, because in X, it's much more about the style, much more about Ty West and, like I said, making a good, dirty film and stuff like that. But Pearl is much more of a character study and we get to see the transition as Maya Goth's character, Pearl, just goes insane and what that looks like in someone's mind and the way that Ty West really used that kind of Wizard of Oz type style to tell it in the 1918 like story or like you know in the 1900s early time uh it was beautiful and like all the cinematography it really did work for me so yeah Pearl sits very comfortable here at our number eight spot Coming in at number seven, we have Jordan Peele's Nope. And this is one that really surprised me that it was going to be this high up on the list. I watched this film twice already. And because I wanted to make sure that I really enjoyed it that much, and I really do. And it's because I had a lot of it spoiled for me. I was really late to the party on Nope. And people told me a lot of elements that took place in this movie. But I still had such a fun time in the way Jordan Peele wrote these characters. They're so natural, so realistic, and it does lean more into the sci-fi realm, but there is horror elements in this movie, like in terms of the score and the sound effects and sound design, like when the ship or the alien creature or UFO is traveling and moving and you can hear the screams of the people that it's digesting in its belly, like and like some of the cinematography and the way like, like, oh man, the way Jordan Peele does it. And we have, you know, OJ just kind of like hiding, not looking in the eyes of the creature. Like, man, this film really does have certain elements in it like that I really loved. That's why I wanted to return to it to a second time just to make sure. And yes, it highly deserves this number seven spot because Nope is my second favorite Jordan Peele film. And like I said, it surprised me because having all that stuff spoiled for me about what it's really about and even the chimp story of having Gordy that stuff was kind of spoiled for me but I still loved my experience with the film and man 
can't wait to return to it again and show some other people like like my daughter she hasn't seen it yet so i'll probably show my daughters this film coming in at number six we have Ghostface came back this year and we had scream oh man and this was kind of a passing of the torch type film and i think they handled it very well there's some like nitpicky things that i had with the film but after watching it a few times i believe i've watched it four three or four times now and it's just it grew on me it grew on me and main reason is because i was kind of dead with the scream franchise this isn't really one that i return to very often i like scream one and two but i'm not very big on three and four that much at all so it's not it was a franchise that was kind of dead in the water for me so when this film came out and me and my wife went to see it in theaters and we took the kids we took my daughters and oh man we had such a freaking fun time like for real the dialogue the meta humor like this is probably the most meta they've ever gone in the Scream franchise and I was really nervous too because this is the first film without Wes Craven and it just it came out so good we had the directors from Ready or Not come over do this film and introducing some amazing new characters and Jenna Ortega's in this movie and she's like the new huge Scream queen so yeah Scream really did hit hard for me like I said revitalized my love for the Scream franchise because it was like I said for me in my terms it was kind of dead in the water for me so this one is like my second favorite in the entire franchise so I think yeah number six spot for 2022 that's a great spot for Scream. Now we're here at the top five and before we get down to that if you're new to the channel before be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing and you get more videos like this and now Coming in at this number five spot is going to be Hulu's Hellraiser. And man, I was highly anticipating this film once I found out that Hellraiser was coming. And then every time they drop some new news like David Bruckner is attached to this project. Okay, I'm a little more interested. Now Jamie Clayton's our new pinhead and the route they were going with the story. And how it's kind of a reimagining of Clive Barker's Hellbound Heart novella. I was like, all right, I'm all on board. And when I experienced this film, I was like, damn, they really did. The creators really ex like brought to life a film that is, you know, homage to the original films, but adds a new level and a new, you know, thing to the movie that adds to the lore and makes it more three dimensional. And I love that. You know what I mean? It doesn't take away from the other films. And I think Jamie Clayton did a fabulous job. And I think our actors and actresses everybody the story the way it progresses it's just it's fresh it flows and I like the way the characters go even though some of them make bad decisions it makes sense for the characters that they are in the film so I think it was a very well written film in terms of my only negative that I had with this film was they didn't really push the envelope in terms of gore status but the Cenobite designs were off the charts so yeah Hellraiser Hulu like was great i can't wait to see what hopefully they do some more and they get maybe a theatrical release because that would be pretty amazing and this is going to be kind of the hulu chunk right here i noticed that with my list this is kind of grouping together because hulu put out a lot of good stuff this year so coming in at the number four spot we have prey the latest addition to the predator franchise and what they did with prey this is a concept that I've been asking for for years like you could ask my wife like for years and years and years I've been asking for a predator film that takes place in the old era like in the olden times some way and bringing it to this time having the predator be a more feral predator that's into physical fighting really experiencing earth for the first time introducing Naru who is one of the best female protagonists that we've had all year in a film and man Amber Mid Thunder really brought this character to life and the creators of this film pray they take their time with this character and build the character up and she makes mistakes in the movie but she learns and is able to take down the predator at the end and it's realistic because she has help her brother helps her out and it's like they have a good bond in the film and it's like his death is very heart disheartening like sad like when I see him die in the film, I'm like, damn, like I got emotional that first time I saw it. And like every time I see it, I'm like such a great character. So Prey in terms of graphics, in terms of like kind of like Scream revitalizing the Predator franchise for me, Prey really did hit hard. So we had some good franchise films this year. We had Prey, 
Hellraiser, Scream, you know, even Texas Chainsaw Massacre for me, I loved that film too. So a lot of good franchise films did come out this year as well, in addition to the original horror that came out. Coming in at number three, like I said, this is our Hulu chunk, so now we're on to Fresh. And this was a fresh and amazing surprise, no, no pun intended. I couldn't believe it when I watched this film. This was one of those films I was just browsing around on Hulu one day and I was like, oh, fresh, like, let's just check this out. And, and oh, man, Daisy Edgar Jones, Sebastian Stan, like, great, great chemistry on screen. And this is one of those movies that I really didn't kind of know where it was going at first. And then when it did go that route, it has such a style to it. And the soundtrack, the cinematography, it's just great. And I believe our director, Mimi Cave, fabulous. I can't wait to see other content that she does. And man, Fresh is one of those movies that, like I said, I was just browsing around one day and it was a glorious gem that I found because I was just like, oh, let's put this on. Let's see. And after it, I was running around the house, like telling everybody, like, you need to check this out. You need to see this film because the acting off the charts. And we have writing and dialogue in here that I feel like I would say or I would write, especially when we get into that third act and like we get to the escape scene and like everything that's happening, like how it transpires, man, the twist, it's even like a simple kind of twist at the end of the film that's not even a big twist, it's just a little twist that I appreciated that I didn't see coming. So man, Fresh is one of the one of those films I highly recommend checking out. Like I said, it was I answered it a lot on live streams when I did with Mike. Did you see that on live streams with a lot of people? When people asked me in the comments, what was your biggest surprise out of films this year? And like Fresh was always a high answer in terms of that, you know, question because I couldn't believe this film. And even the cast, I'm not crazy attached to these actors or actresses, but they feel so real in the film and it has such a style and substance as well. So yeah, I greatly appreciated this film. Coming in our number two spot, the runner up to the top dog this year is another Ty West film and done by A24. A24 is putting out a lot of good content. I've noticed recently that I am an A24 whore. I really do like their content. And number two is going to be X man this film came out of nowhere and like really did like the simple way to explain this film is it's a good dirty film they made a slasher film that actually has a lot of substance and a lot of meaning and themes to it and some people talk crap about slasher films and say that about the 80s that they're just wash rinse repeat slasher films are just killers you know hunting down chicks or like you know there's just sex and all this stuff and gore and it's like no this film actually has themes at the center of it and Pearl enhances this film. So that's why X climbed the list for me is because after seeing Pearl, it actually enhanced my love for X. So that's why X climbed this list. And after returning to it multiple times, it just gets better and better. It's got such style. And I think Ty West, I could confidently say right now that I think Ty West is just the king of period piece filming. And I can't wait to see what he does with Maxine because that one's going to be set in the 1980s in the like porno era like the really big times you know we're gonna get to follow Maxine so that is gonna be amazing film because like I said Ty West is just over the years like and all the films that I've seen from him has solidified himself as being a person that knows how to create a period piece horror film and make it genuine make the authenticity real and you feel like you're there and it just takes you back and X was such a fabulous surprise and one of like I said one of the best horror films this year and it's widely talked about people love it all that kind of stuff so yes it sits comfortable here at this number two spot but there has to be a top dog a number one and this was actually one that completely actually also like fresh surprised me and every time i watch this film i watched it three times now in this year and it just gets better and better and it's the score the acting everything and it's alex garland's Man, another A24 film. Like I said, I'm an A24 horror now, I've recently noticed. And Men is just a great film in terms of, like I said, the, the style, the way it's tackled. Every scene is so beautiful. Like my favorite things about this film are the score and the music and the cinematography because every scene just seems so well thought out. Even the posters are so engaging and I love it. Like that's what I really enjoyed about this film. And this was a 
blind buy. I went out and I bought this one just when it came out on Blu-ray and I was like, all right, we're going to buy this, check it out. I heard some mixed things about it because it's one of those films that a lot of people said when they came down to it, they loved it. But when the end happened, they didn't like it. And for me, this is an expert storytelling that has really good themes and it might be a little bit style over substance but the style is so amazing and you really get immersed in this film because of it and I think it's a great way to talk about you know dealing with grief and dealing with broken relationships and all that kind of stuff and maybe like abusive relationships but it tells it in a horror way and I like that because you can go to just a drama film or like a rom-com and you can get those same themes but this film tells it in a more artistic more mind-bending way that makes you think of the film so men like when I said in my review when I did it it's one of those films that you have to be thinking about it days after this isn't a film that like you just watch it once and you're like oh I totally get it it's a film that I watched multiple times, and every time I watched it, I got something new out of it. And I like Jessie Buckley as our main actress. I think she's fabulous. She's gorgeous. She knows how to go through every scene, and she takes you through the movie. And there's some scenes where she doesn't have a lot of dialogue, but the way she's directed or the way she carries herself and the mannerisms, man, it tr truly blew me away for real. Men is one of those films that, like, just completely knocked my socks off and like I said I've watched it three times already this year and I praise it every freaking time and I think it's easily one of the most gorgeous films I've ever seen and the blu-ray I have isn't even like a 4k or anything like that so it's freaking gorgeous this movie but this is just my opinions my thoughts on what are the best horror films that came out this year and like I said in the beginning in the intro that means I would love to hear from all of you in the comment section share your thoughts or what are your some of your what are some of your favorites in the horror genre this year for 2022 like i said to me this was a very potent year a lot better than last year and be sure to stay tuned to the channel because i'm going to be having some more videos coming out and of course have a safe and happy halloween everyone peace out